I'm Morag from CGTN and welcome to an incredible live stream today. It is going to be an absolute treat, so you want to stick with us for the full hour. I'm here in Fengsheng Ancient Town, which is about 40 kilometers outside of Chongqing. It's a really special town. It was uh, actually founded back in the Northern Song Dynasty, but started to flourish in the Ming and Qing dynasties when it became this huge business hub because of its location. Now, I've never been here before, but luckily I'm joined by James from Ai Chongqing. Hello, welcome. Hello, uh, hi guys, I'm James from Ai Chongqing. I've lived in Chongqing for a long time. I came here about 18 years ago. And with the exception of a few years in Korea, I mean, I've been here ever since. Wow. So, yeah. And you've actually been to Fengsheng a few times already, right? Yeah, I've been here many times in the past. Um, I mean, some of the more notable examples was uh, often they have these uh, La Wai events. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, they bring some of the, uh, the foreign students, uh, foreign residents in Chongqing here and other places in Banan to come and experience the, uh, the culture here. And I've also been here with uh, Ai Chongqing to film some interesting programs as well. And also about a year ago, I filmed another promotional video here with uh, Chongqing TV. So it feels a bit like a second home, away from home, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Fantastic. So you're going to be my tour guide today. Shall we begin? Shall we go for a little wander? Yeah, let's go. Let's it's go. a cool place. All right. So what do you think is the main thing that distinguishes Fengsheng from other ancient towns around China? Because there are hundreds, if not thousands, around. Yeah, at least thousands. Um, yeah, there is one thing that really sticks out to me. So um, even if I use some of the other old towns in Chongqing uh, as an example, mm -hmm. if you go there, um, almost uh, all of these stalls are like rented out. Okay. So it's actually, it's actually kind of a rarity to meet some of the, uh, the authentic locals there. But uh, Fengsheng is uh, very different. If you come here, almost uh, all of these shops, all of the stalls, the guest houses, they're run by the, uh, the locals wow. who have uh, lived here for generations. So it's really still an old community. Yeah, and, well, old and new, but, you know, traditional community. Exactly, and you do get a strong feeling of uh, community. And even for me personally as well, because I've been here so many times in the past, uh, I think like most of these uh, stall owners uh, recognize me. Oh, really? Yeah. Shall we go and have it? What's this? Now, this is a baijiu shop, surely. Um, yes, it is. So it's like a uh, local Huangjiao. Huangjiao. So, uh, okay. So, wow. So, and all the traditional bottles as well, I can see. These are amazing. Okay, so they've actually got Baijiu in there. That's right. And so. it's so cheap as well, like 10 RMB, so about one pound. It's a bargain. <laughs> that is a bargain, <laughs> an absolute bargain. Fantastic. Um, and we can see they're being uh, flavoured here with different things like honeycomb. Honeycomb, yeah. That's, wow. a, that's something I actually haven't uh, noticed I've before. I've never seen that one before. And mm. lemon and... Oh, so a berry. Berries in there. Wow, incredible. Now that is a big hip flask. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> For the Scots among us, maybe a medium-sized hip flask. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but this is uh, yeah, this is really cool. I really like this. It's almost like a saddle pack, so you can. Wow. Oh, okay. okay. The, uh, different shapes as well. Whoa. So maybe this is more a uh, a Scottish style. Yeah, one. this yeah. is. The, I'll take this home. My parents will be very happy with this. Wow. Yeah, How much Soviet, alcohol uh, Soviet can... Union yeah. as well, isn't it? SSSR. Yeah, yeah. It is a little. Yeah. All right. Shishia. Yeah. All right. Shall we continue? Yeah, let's go. So I think it's such a peaceful street, isn't it? And you can see everyone's still building with wood and it's really traditional and old school. It kind of feels like you step back in time when you're wandering down here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they have lots of uh, traditional uh, techniques over here. So just this uh, shop stall wow. here is uh, one I know very well. So the, uh, the man who works here, he uh, makes uh, implements. Kind of, uh, I don't know what you would uh, call these um, over here. I... Yeah, what's the word for them? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he makes these by hand with uh, bamboo wicker. Oh, wow. And Handmade as well. Yeah. And then what's amazing about it as well is that the, uh, the bamboo is so sharp. So if you are try it, you know, you're going to cut your hands and they're going to be bleeding in no time. But uh, and if you feel, uh, I mean, we can't see him here at the moment, but if you feel his, uh, the skin on his hands, it's so calloused, you know, it's, you know. Oh yeah, it is very sharp, yeah. even just one piece. So I can imagine over hours and hours and hours of working. Is he here? <laughs> um, he, was, he was here a moment ago. He was here. Yeah. Not bad. But, uh, oh, maybe he's a little too yeah, busy for he can, us. <laughs> he, can he, he can do this all day and then he won't cut his hands, so that's really amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. Imagine just the calluses that you must have. Yeah. After years of doing this, I have loads of other like traditional techniques here. I mean, there's a blacksmith's oh, wow. as well. I mean, I don't think I'm not sure he's open at the moment, but um, at night, 
we uh, did a video with him at uh, with for Wai Chongqing. Oh, cool! Yeah, so you know he put the uh, like the iron kind of in the in the furnace, and um, his wife he works there with his wife, and then they're hitting with a hammer, <laughs> and all of these you know sparks fly off. You know that was amazing. So lots of in inheritable cultures here. Um, it, it seems like maybe Chongqing has put money into making sure that people can continue their handicrafts yes. and continue this traditional way of life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of the uh, the things we're going to see today were only listed as intangible cultural heritage a couple of years ago, maybe oh, wow. uh, over, just that, over a decade okay. ago. Yes, I mean, I suppose a lot of them were in danger of disappearing. Yes. But you know, now they've done this, you know, they're actually, a lot of them are quite famous, even nationwide. How, how do they get out there though? Has it been built up with e-commerce or how are people getting their name out there? Yeah, I mean, um, e-commerce is definitely a big one, particularly uh, some of the, the local famous snacks here. Okay. So a bit later, you know, there's the, uh, the Liu family horse beans. We'll see that Ooh. a bit later. So uh, I remember when the, uh, the boss now, mm -hmm. you know, who uh, kind of, uh, he gave up his old uh, job so he could come back and take over the, the family business. But um, he's uh, done a lot with um, e-commerce. And actually, when I did the show with Chongqing TV mm -hmm. a year ago, we did a, um, a live uh, broadcast together to, uh, to sell some of the, uh, some of the products. <laughs> yeah. So you're no stranger to live yeah. streaming. And some of the other things, you know, some of the, like the, the music, mm -hmm. and the, the dance here, um, I suppose with the uh, support of uh, Banan, they've uh, been able to travel all over the country and do performances. Oh, incredible. I think some of them, they've even performed out of the country as well. Really? Yeah, Pre-COVID yeah. times? Pre-COVID yeah, pre times? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what, are they, what are they doing here? It looks like they're drying rice. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is uh, like the rice cake. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to have to try so, uh, a rice So this cake. rice has already been uh, boiled up. So um, a bit later, I don't know if you'll be able to show us. He actually puts the, uh, the rice in here. Okay, and then, then uses the... We take the... these uh, hammers and then we can like, kind of uh, pummel it. I wonder, I just want to feel how heavy... Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, that's so heavy. <laughs> so uh, quite a good upper body workout. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I've tried doing this before and uh, I suppose um, a year ago, I wasn't in such uh, great shape so you can... <laughs> You can, you know, hit the rice for, I don't know, a minute or so, but then you're pretty worn out, I can tell you. <laughs> and probably it's uh, these ladies that are doing it have been doing it for years and years, so they're strong. Exactly, and uh, I suppose they've uh, got some over here we can try. I mean, they've oh, got yeah. the rice cakes, but these look a bit like uh, the manto, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, are... no, these are rice cakes. Oh, they are rice cakes. Yeah, and then you kind of have a, um, a little uh, condiment, which is made from soybean. Okay. Yeah, so they fry the soybean and they make it into a powder and you can just like dip it. Okay, and, can uh, I just eat show? Oh, mm. I'll just show you. Yeah. Look, so they are bashed into these shapes. They look delicious. I think we're going to try some later, so we'll leave these for now. But I heard there was somewhere around here, Shishini. There was somewhere around here that we really needed to visit. Where are we going? Where are we heading? Um, okay, so we're going to go to check out this place here. This is okay. uh, the Shuchuan Hall. Okay, so let's head inside, shall we, and see okay. what's going on. Um, there's uh, lots of interesting things about this. Um, I would sort of introduce the place first. Sure. So this is like a guest house. But uh, so, you know, people can come and stay here overnight. Now, I've, I've stayed here before have myself. You? I have, yeah. Uh, but inside, they've got another big traditional courtyard, and they have a tradition where once a month the villagers come here, and you know, they have like these square tables, so they uh, they can sit around the tables and they can drink some tea, and really they can just uh, converse and you know, talk a little bit about what's on their minds. Mm -hmm. And uh, they used to do this um, a lot, you know, a lot in the past, and uh, it's definitely a, uh, a habit that they've worked hard to try and revive. Brought it from the past into the present. All right, exactly. let's head inside and have a look. Yeah. And you can also you can see the tower yeah. at the top. So um, actually, um, not that long ago, maybe uh, the 1950s, there were still kind of a lot of bandits living around here. <laughs> so actually, before this was a kind of a watchtower. How incredible. Yeah. So um, for example, if they could see bandits coming mm -hmm. uh, from, from the mountains, <laughs> yeah, they you know they can like close up all of the doors to uh, try and keep them out. Fantastic. No um, bandits today, though. No, so no bandits today, yeah. <laughs> so now what is it? It's a hotel now, or guest, um, guest rooms, or? Not really. I mean, you can still climb up to the top. Oh, yeah, you get okay. a good you know, panoramic view over the old town. Oh, amazing! Yeah. But um, okay, I suppose bandits. now it's mostly a, um, a guest house, but also um, a place where they can do events as well. Yes, yes, we're going to yeah. see in a bit, right? Yeah. Now getting out of the rain. Come on, let's go and have a look. Wow! Already, it's very grand. This space, isn't it? Yeah, it just you know, it feels very traditional. It you know, does. Very, very authentic. It's very authentic. 
Oh wow, look how beautiful this is. Oh wow. Oh, there's some sort of performance going on. I think we should go and check it out. Okay, now, what is this? Okay, so uh, this is a uh, very traditional song from Banan District it's called a uh, Mudong folk song. Okay. So uh, Mudong is a, um, another village um, next to the Yangtze River. And they have a very famous uh, like rural song which they sing. And it's really good for two things. So when there was an old cultural, agricultural society, uh, people would sing this in the fields. One, to kind of give them a bit of you know, motivation, a uh, teamwork spirit. Uh, but also when they're tilling the fields, it also, it also gives them a sense of rhythm. So uh, we'll listen to this a moment and you can also hear that it has like a good rhythm. Okay, let's well. have a listen. Let's get closer. I've seen him uh, all over the uh, Chongqing for uh, many, for many events. It's very motivational, isn't it? And I see mm. the rhythm. The rhythm is very much. You can see it comes from the fields. Exactly. Yeah. Very motivational. And there are also like songs. I mean, I only know one Wudo folk song which I've performed oh on the Chongqing before. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, really, there were, there were hundreds. If not thousands of like different Wudong songs. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I just kind of wish I could dance. <laughs> okay, I think I've almost got it. <laughs> It's amazing that this kind of culture is being saved, you know, it could have so easily just been lost, but now it's still being kept alive by people. Yeah, Lots of these people are very young, you know, learning from old masters. Yeah. And what's so fascinating about this as well, I mean, this is the uh, traditional style we doing folk song. But, you know, uh, we also have a term in Chongqing, which is called cultural innovation. Right, yeah, to, okay. I mean, I suppose you know, this is really great, but maybe to younger people in Chongqing, you know, maybe they kind of like a more like, modern take mm -hmm. on it. So, um, they, I've also, so recently, actually in Banan, I went to a studio and he filmed uh, some um, 
Actually, no, we recorded some like rap style and we've done folk oh, songs. No yeah. Way. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. incredible, like old and new culture merging to create something. Yeah, yeah exactly. But... And then they've mixed in some like modern style dances and things like that. So uh... Oh fantastic. That sounds like a treat to see. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I think this is kind of the epitome of a, an old Chinese village, isn't it? With these swooping roofs. And now we're going to also come down into some of the little alleyways and corridors, which really is what you picture when you, when you think about a Chinese village. Yeah, so that's what we're going to get. So if you just uh, go down these steps down there, we can go to the main streets so in uh, Fengshan Guzhen, and that's where we're going to see uh, even more of the, uh, the cultural uh, heritage. Okay, and yeah. I'm a little hungry. I don't know about you, but I could do with trying some yeah, snacks. Yeah, some snacks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, if you want to have a try, let's go. I think there's uh, there's lots. I mean, Chongqing is synonymous with spicy food, right? So sure. I think a lot of what we're going to try today has some of that spice. But uh, how are you with spicy food? I love spicy food, and uh, believe it or not, that's one of the uh, the reasons why I came to Chongqing and not uh, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere else. So um, when I first worked here, um, I had a, um, an interview in England, and they actually asked me, uh, do you like spicy food? And, you know, I've always loved, you know, spicy food, you know, ever since I was a, um, a youngster. So they said, oh, you should, uh, you should really come to Chongqing. But, you know, at that time, I didn't, I know, I never even heard of the city before. That's the thing that blows my mind is, you know, Chongqing and the surrounding area, it has over 30 million people, but especially over in the West, we know Beijing, we know Shanghai, somewhat Guangzhou and Shenzhen, sure. but, and Hong Kong, but Chongqing is kind of not in the minds of anyone. And it's yeah. just such a huge and just very cultural place. I think anyone should come and visit yeah. at least once in their life, right? Definitely. And um, but I think in the last uh, couple of years, particularly, you know, Chongqing has been more on the international yeah. map. And uh, now a lot of uh, media organizations have done like, you know, lots of like, video reports mm -hmm. on this city. Okay, okay, now look right. at this. Now this is what we've come for. We've come for something spicy and this looks just the thing. Yeah, hey, you can check it out. Oh, okay, okay. Lobugan. I'm going to try that. So, okay. So, I'm going to try this one first. So, this is pickled radish uh, mixed with chilies. So, I'm going to give this one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's salty, spicy, but also a little sweet. I think yeah. that mixed with some rice would be yeah. delicious. And I think that's what a lot of these are actually used for. Mm -hmm. So if you just want to eat something simple, you have some rice, but you haven't really cooked up a big dish or anything like that. Mm. Yeah, you can usually um, eat it with some of these. Yeah, no, yeah, what that is delicious. So this is uh, soybean. Uh, yeah, the uh, black bean. Black yeah. bean. So again, very salty, mm. I think. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It's got a very smoky, mm. smoky flavour. Yeah, um, it's delicious. And then this is tofu. Mmm. Okay, and this isn't regular tofu. This is almost fermented tofu, I think. Yes, yeah, so it's a lot more dense than regular tofu as well. So um, with this one, you just want to eat like a very small piece. Yeah, it's very, very salty, salty. Yeah. but also very incredibly smooth. Yeah. Almost like a pate. Yeah, it's lovely. Mm. Mm. Yummy. Oh, and these look like raw beans. Yeah. I have one myself. Yeah, <laughs> got to get those snacks. Sissini. <laughs> mm. mm. Again, salty. So all of these condiments, really good for the end of the meal with your rice. Sure. Mm. Mm. So I so say this is like the main street here in uh, Fushun Guzhen. And yeah, I have a lot of like, memories from here as well. Remember back in February, um, we came here with Ai Chong Ching. Okay. Because uh, Banan had a themed event called the uh, the 12 Earthly STEM Hours. Oh, wow. So, so what over, does that entail? Okay, so you know, um, in the past, the uh, the day in China mm -hmm. was split into 12 uh, two-hour periods. Oh, was it? Yeah, so in this uh, themed every event, day. every uh, two hours, they would uh, find some of the people here to do um, to kind of uh, demonstrate a traditional uh, activity. So um, if we give you an example, one was called Da mm -hmm. Okay, so of course, um, in a long time in the past, hundreds of years ago or thousands of years ago, they didn't have clocks <laughs> okay. so much. So um, I've, as every new two hour period, uh, somebody would walk down the main street with a, with a gong, they would, they would hit it. <laughs> 
And you know, they would uh, tell people what the time, what time of day it is. Wow. And also give that. them some advice as well, like um, you know, make sure that you're, you've locked your doors, uh, be careful of fire hazards, you know, things like that. <laughs> a modern day alarm clock, but yeah. a better edition. Now, what is going on here? This looks, it's got a bit livelier down here, right. so we're getting so, into the centre of the town. Right, so this is the, uh, the Leo family. Uh, horse bean. Horse, horse bean. What is beans, a horse yeah. bean? It's kind of like a big, you know, like a kidney bean. Okay. Like a bean so, the size of a horse. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they grow these. And as you can see uh, well, how they make it over there. Oh, so wow. I think they grow these beans at quite high elevation, like two, three thousand meters. And, um, oh. and you know, this maybe looks simple, but I've actually tried doing this myself. It's really Have tough. You? Yeah. Yeah. So right now they seem to be cooking the beans and then here adding some flavor. Yeah, so here they're adding the flavor here. Okay. So, so in the box there, this is kind of like um, sugar, like uh, sugar oh, mixed with uh, okay. water. So then uh, you can see they drip it over the broad beans and then this guy is kind of like flipping them at the same time. And uh, they have like a number of uh, different flavors. Uh, my favorite one, I don't know if you want to uh, try Yeah, it. let's have a quick and try, shall we? Try them over here. Just a little so, try. My, my, my personal favorite <laughs> is the uh, is this one. Oh, yeah, so this is the uh, the vinegar, the vinegar and uh, sugar. Willa. Yeah. Little spicy. That's what I like. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Very crunchy. Yeah. And um, mm. you know, this uh, brand has been run for many generations, but uh, the uh, the latest um, owner of this place, uh, also called Leo, Mr. Leo. Um, I know him personally because I've been here so many times. Oh wow! Okay. But um, originally he didn't really want to do this, but um, so he used to uh, have a different job out in the uh, the main city of Chongqing. But um, in order to kind of um, keep the uh, the family tradition going, he gave that up and he came back and he took over the family business. So yeah. that really is being passed down the generations yeah, as absolutely. well. Absolutely. Now I can smell the shop before we mm. enter it. It smells like. Like a distillery in Scotland, almost, but with a, a tang of something different. So mm. we're in a wine shop. I know that much. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of wine? So this is the... Uh, this is not really Baijiu. This is Huang Shi Huang Jiu, right? Gaolia. No, Gaolia. Gaolia. Yeah, Gaolia. So kind of green rice. I mean, okay. I don't know... Uh, not the, uh, sorghum, though, really. which is used with Baijiu, but some sort of grain. Yeah. So should so we, we go, go and have a little check it out? So let's go and have a look. Let's go. Um, but here you can see how the whole process works. So we've got the grains over here. Now these are untouched grains, it looks like. Oh. And you can't get a whiff of this, but it really it smells like it's just a batch yeah. of just been cooked. Yeah, very strong smell, but very nice. So yeah, I think this is where they steam. Yeah, come and have a look. Steam it looks the like they put in kgs and kgs in here, and then oh wow, this is movable. Yeah, so it kind of steams these, and then they're put over here to air out and uh, yeah, yeah that's so they already fermented a little there, bit and then I think after that they go into the bins here to dry they, uh, they cover them over and uh, also like the moist they have like a plug hole at the bottom oh wow a plug hole yeah <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to see it but see the uh, the, the liquid oh yeah here we can it's yeah so, uh, so under this uh, board here mm -hmm. there's a um, there's kind of another little pit with a plug hole so the idea is the uh, the liquid kind of like drains out and then after that, uh, they can use the greens to uh, distill the wine. It's so interesting that they've got the workshop right here, and then yeah. you can just go and try them right over yeah, here. Yeah, you know, and the whole process we'll is still to... done by hand, so they, they don't really use any machinery. Yeah, you know, apart from this. that big, yeah. <laughs> the big barrel. But la bang, kaisu shema. All right, so. Okay, let's, uh, let's try these. Shisha shema. So of course you know the uh, the rice wine yes. in China is very strong. I don't know it's, if you had a lot of experience with it. Uh, I think every every foreigner that comes to China has a mm. few tales to do with rice wine, um, but I th they usually range within mm. a whiskey is usually about forty five to fifty five percent, mm. but a rice wine in China can range from anything from fifty to the the kind of seventies and eighties. Sure. So it's not to be taken lightly and. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know, I've got a lot of uh, Chinese relatives here because you know, my wife is from Chongqing. Okay. I didn't oh, mention wow. that before. Yeah. But um, if I go back to her hometown, then they'll say, you know, well, we don't touch anything under 50%. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> okay, so what percentage is this, do we reckon? So, this is 9 degrees, it's about 53 percent. 53 percent, okay, it's 11 a.m. in the morning, but it's 5 p.m. somewhere, right? And this is the one that's been distilled three years. Okay, okay. a three-year-old. Right, cheers. Cheers. A gambe. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh, that's very nice. smooth. It goes down really easily. Mm. Some of the baijos that you drink sometimes really hit the throat. Sure. But this is quite sweet, almost pineapple-y in flavour. Yeah, I mean, there's no, um, there's no burn with it. So no? The, uh, the malt flavour is very strong. Mmm. Yeah, you can taste it's the grains. Good. All right. Raho, <laughs> <Some more>? <laughs> Let's try the stronger um. one. Now, how strong is this one? About the same. Yeah, about oh, the same okay. Strength. Oh, it's about, it's about 1% less. 1% less? So it's not going to make a big difference. Okay. But, but five, uh, years, five old. years Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Again, cheers. 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 It smells a lot stronger. Mm. Mm, the flavour is stronger. The flavour is definitely stronger. You can taste mm. the, the alcohol in it more and definitely the, the grains in it more. Sure. Been left there for longer. All right. Because I've got to take it easy because I've got to drive home late. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> and again, flavoured with lots of different things. Oranges in this one and lemons. Yeah, mulberries, so yeah, peanuts in that one. And you were saying this is quite a common family tradition, like even when you go and visit your relatives, they might do this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Although they're kind of like getting a bit older now, so uh, they're not quite as... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as into the moonshine. No. Yeah. I just okay. love the fact that in every one of these shops, it's the old school stove that's being used with the coal. Everything is, yeah, is very I mean, I think, traditionally made, I think this right? This one is a coal-fired one, so we can have a um, look into here. So it kind of looks like maybe, I think it does look like coal. That is yeah, definitely coal. Yeah. But some of them also use, just use the, uh, the firewood as well. Fantastic. And, uh, and it really gives to that atmosphere, doesn't it? You can smell the smoke and the fire. Yeah, it kind of it brings really you back. Yeah, it gives you that no, traditional feel. Like yeah. Walking through the, uh, the streets. Adds to the atmosphere. Yeah, and this is also a big specialty here in Fengsheng as well. This is the, uh, the bean curd. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm warming up my hands on that. So oh, this yeah, is, yeah. Uh, what's it made from? Soybeans. Soybeans, yeah. Soybeans. So, uh, they cook it, so they mix it all up, and then they add something else, which causes it to curdle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, if you just eat it by yourself, it might taste a little bit bland. Okay. But um, I don't know if we can see any here. Maybe over here. Oh. So uh, you can see here, um, all of these dishes are like different mixes of uh, peppers. Oh, and wow. chilies. So, so yeah, the, your spicy ones down here yeah. and your sweet ones up here. Yes, yeah, so you have the red chilies, you also have the, uh, the green chilies as Ooh. well, there are different flavours. But I, know, I kind of like, I really love to kind of mix them all together, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, what really I would good. do as well. What about you? What would you do yeah. at home? You'll have to let us know. If you've tried this before, yeah. let us know in the comments what your favourite flavour is. Okay, and then this Ooh. as well. This is the uh, fatty intestines. Oh, wow. As okay. well, this is like a big specialty here. Spicy intestines. Spicy, Look at that. yeah. <laughs> Mmm. Okay, right, let's okay, carry let's on up this little street. Do you, do you want to try one? Do you try a fatty intestine? Oh, yeah, can you show me? Eat it, Dian. Oh, All right. I'm going to have to say. Um, Fatty intestines are not really my favourite. Not your favourite, <laughs> not okay. Not my favourite, so maybe I won't. Uh, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, mm. Mm. It is very fatty. But kind of reminds me of <laughs> like a, <laughs> it's okay. a steak, or kid, <laughs> steak and kidney pie. Sorry. Just get. Uh, anyway, we better go off. We right, better head uh, off. determined to let me uh, have one of these. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, no. The, the uh, flavour is very good. It is, and mm. it's something like back in back at home, we don't really eat intestines and things, but they are mm. actually very good for you. Yeah. So. Uh, more. Yeah, but I mean, the condiments are so nice. Really, can eat anything. Yeah. Because you know, like, even like the the pig brains. Mm-hmm. If it's in a popular. hot pot. Yeah. Now I heard uh, a rumor that Chong, uh, Chongqing was the birthplace of hot pot because. Yeah. Along the riverbed, people used to g gather all the innards and things that were thrown out of the ships yes. and the boats. And then to make it taste better, they put in spices and different condiments sure. and stuff. Do you think that's true? I can believe it. 
because um, they say like, Chowtim and Docks were the place where it was um, invented. Okay. Because was for all of um, all the time of you know since Chowtim being uh, opened as an international port, kind of in the 1890s. Mm -hmm. That you know, of course, they had a lot of the uh, the chilies coming through, and like I said, um, they kind of made it up there. But it's whether it was exactly that place or there was another port. There were yeah, lots of other been. ports in Chongqing. <laughs> yeah. Could have been that one, but it was definitely in Chongqing. Yeah. I really love this street because you kind of get an idea of what life is like as well. There's lots mm. of, you can just kind of see into people's houses and, and yeah. into people's workshops. So, I mean, this looks very interesting, this one. Let's go and have a little look in here. Yeah, so I know this place quite well. So the, the owner of this shop, he makes uh, like scales. Does he? Oh, wow, yeah. is this a scale? It's a traditional scale. Would you ever have guessed? Okay, yeah, so here he is. Ah. Hey, Laban. Hey, Niha. Niha. <laughs> so, yeah, before there were electronic scales, we used these. And uh, this is Chen, and he's been, he's 77 years old and has been working here how long? I think he's in like, the 1960s or something. Wow. Yeah. Okay, he's so a, a, real, a real shifu, a real master of the trade. Yeah, and he makes all of these scales by hand. Wow. So always from these, uh, these small ones here, maybe slightly bigger ones here. So he must have very good eyesight. <laughs> yes, he, yeah, he was saying to me a little bit earlier, and his eyesight is like, still, very, uh, still very strong, so very good. And it has to be, because, I mean, I suppose uh, he has to make all of these markings at the, uh, the exact yeah, line, uh, uh, yeah, at the right mark. Oh, made one. Okay, uh, uh, okay, so he's marked on, he's marked on where he's going to... So you may tell him he can use all jiga. No, it's amazing that you know, he's so familiar with making them, he doesn't really need anything else. Anything else. No. Yeah, he could just, he could do, just it, do it, you know, just uh, based on his, you know, his eyesight, his uh, instincts. Mm. Incredible. So, there's a little weight here as well. Oh yeah, you've yeah. got to test them, you've got yeah. to test them. All right, Shisha Shufu, we are uh, off shisha. to the next place. Uh -huh. Incredible. So that looks like quite a, a time-heavy craft. That's the problem with some of these, right? It's going to take a long time to make one thing or, you know, and then sell it on. Yeah, exactly. And I think the inheritance is also a bit of a problem as mm -hmm. well. So some of them, like the, uh, like the dances, like the Mudong folk song, um, they're pretty uh, safe now mm -hmm. yeah, because you know, they've uh, put a lot of investment into it. You know, they've got uh, younger people interested in it and you know, they uh, take them on performances all around the country. Fantastic. But some of the individual places here, for example, the, the blacksmiths, mm -hmm. when he came here with Ai Chongqing in February, uh, we had a short interview with him and we were saying, um, do we have anybody to take over because the, the blacksmith is now quite old. Okay. And he was saying, no, Henry, his, uh, his children live in the city and they just have like, normal jobs and uh, they don't really want to take over. So he was saying to him, we asked him, you know, what are you going to do? And he said to us that, you know, when the day comes that, you know, he, uh, he can't do it anymore, then they're probably going to have to uh, close down. That's such a shame, yeah, but I that guess would be that's a big shame. part of... The problem with modernization, sure. it's, it's good in some ways, but then certain things do get lost. But it's great that you can come to places like this. And a lot of people, like the horse bean guy, oh, have come yes. back and realized that, you know, this is the way they want to live their lives. Sure, with the uh, horse beans, yeah, Mr. Leo, he, he was doing a, he had his own career out of university. But um, because, again, his family business was kind of in danger of uh, no, being discontinued. Yeah, he gave that up and decided to come back. Fantastic. Uh, now, Rancho over. Tea House. I've heard about this place. Apparently, this is one of the original tea houses that was in the town hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And it used to be a place that people would come to settle their disputes. Different groups of people would come to settle village disputes and just have a chat, really. So, yeah. OK, yeah, so not too different from the, uh, the place we saw before, mm -hmm. the Shuchuan Hall. Uh, but should we go, into, should we go inside I would and have a look? You oh, know, my hands are cold. I don't know about you guys at home, but my yeah. hands are a little chilly, so a nice cup of tea. Yeah, that'd be yeah. Uh, Let's just do it. a ticket. <laughs>
Wow, it's very grand, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I really love these, these old carvings. carvings as well. I mean, they're so like intricate and, and this kind of like, you know, 3D as well. I suppose, you know, we've got the, uh, the bottom of these, but, you know, a lot of the carv wooden carvings in Bainan, they're kind of like see-through as well. Wow. Yeah, so they kind of call them like uh, fu diao in, in Chinese. Incredible. Just the amount of time that goes into one piece and then it's yeah. just on a, do on a door or yeah, on a... Yeah, exactly. They, <laughs> a hallway. A place where, you, know, you wouldn't necessarily notice. Yeah. Oh, this is wonderful. Hey, ni hao. Uh, ni hao. Hey. Oh, it's just Oh, it's ready oh, for you, us. Oh, okay, let's uh, take a seat here. Oh, yes. So, Fantastic. Uh, oh, I feel is so it good. hot? It's got a bit cool, actually. Oh, we yeah, need should we add some, uh, add some hot water? Oh, 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 careful. Sorry. oh yes, oh, that's yeah. just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> so, normally, do you like Chinese tea? I do. Oh, yeah. so, so, so. so it's very different from British tea. When I first came over, it was quite difficult to get used to because, mm. as you can see, the leaves are left in the, in the pot. So when you first start drinking it, you sometimes get the leaves stuck in your teeth. But after, uh, after a while, you get used to it. And I love the ceremony around it and the culture and the fact it's much more common to see people sit around and they actually come out to drink tea. Exactly. Over, you know, a few hours even, which is incredible compared to, I mean... Back when we were young, we'd just stick a tea bag in the, in the cup yeah, and that was it, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's not really a communal thing either. It's just maybe at home in front of the, in front yeah. of the TV or something. Yeah. Yeah, but, Which, uh, but also you can drink this in front of the TV at home as well. You can do, but, yeah, it is possible. But it's very unusual back west to have a tea house, especially for coming and drinking tea and having a chat. Sure, and um, I think this is just a um, simple uh, Chinese green tea. Yeah, it does but, taste uh, like a lucha. But um, I don't know if you've had this before, but I tend not to drink it too late in the day. Oh. So if you, if you leave until like 7 or 8 p.m., then I just find it makes it difficult to sleep. Yeah, because yeah. green tea, I think, has more caffeine in it than coffee, which is strange because it's, you know, a leaf. And it's tea, which isn't usually that caffeinated. But yeah, yeah. Good, good, good point. <laughs> yeah, and I think this tea is also grown here in Banan District. Oh, Actually, there, there are a lot of tea plantations okay. yeah, in, this, in this district of Chongqing. And you know the basic topography of Chongqing, we have a lot of mountain ridges, mm -hmm. about seven main mountain ridges. And they say that the, the ideal elevation is just where the, the cloud lines. Oh, well, then the it's perfect. Plants, yeah. It's perfect here. Yeah, even on the drive up here, I was thinking how wonderful an area it would be to grow tea. I wasn't sure if they did here, but just because it's so luscious and high up and yeah. So it's of no surprise that there's lots of tea. Yeah, exactly. Here. I think one of the most uh, popular plantations here is called Bai Shang Shan, like Bai Shang Mountain. Okay. And um, over there they grow a famous brand in Chongqing called uh, Bai Nan Yinzhen. Okay. Kind of like the silver needles. Oh. And uh, no, the, the leaves are very different from this green tea. They actually look like needles and when you put them in the water, they kind of float vertically at the, at the top of the water. What's the flavour like? Also very, uh, also very good as well. It's kind of a bit <laughs> difficult to uh, describe. But um, I think they started out not too long ago, like in the 1990s. Oh, really? But uh, they really made a name for themselves in 2004 because actually I remember in that year, I was in Chongqing, because mm -hmm. then I first came to Chongqing oh, yeah. in 2003. Uh, they had a Pacific Rim Mayors meeting and the, the banan yinjin, like the silver needle tea, was kind of the official tea for it. Incredible. Yeah, so that's when they really made a uh, big name for themselves. Incredible. Yeah. And now, mm. well, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> right, now our hands are suitably warm. Shall we get back out on the street, do you think? Let's go. So we're going to take a big gulp of this, uh, just a warm up. <laughs> mm. I've been drinking it quickly. All right. Lovely, okay. Okay, that's just, yeah. <laughs> All right, out we go. Oh, it started to rain and it just looks oh, yeah. so atmospheric. Beautiful. It's a very romantic town, I feel. I feel like you could come down for an afternoon with your loved ones or your partner and just have a really nice time exploring. It's very, you know, of, of all the villages around Chongqing, I'd yeah, say this is one of the ones worth coming to just to get you know, if you If you want like, the really, a really authentic, <laughs> you know, Chongqing old town experience, this is, well, I think, like the, uh, the main place yeah. to come in. Also, this is really interesting as well. We've got the, uh, the door gods as oh, well. Wow. I don't know if you, if you know about those. A little yeah, bit, so but you'll explain it better. Yeah, so you know, the building, you know, kind of from evil spirits or something. So they have one on each of the doorways. Incredible. And yeah. these, I mean, these look old. These look very old. 
Yeah, you know, very uh, intricate, you know, lots they of uh, skill that went into it. And I heard a rumour as well that that's why houses always have a step as well, because to, to kind of keep evil spirits away, yeah, right? That's right. So, so lots they of have like this, this. this step, because apparently spirits don't have legs, so yeah. they can't get over. Yeah, and uh, something to bear in mind as well, um, I made this mistake once upon a time, it's actually uh, stepping. Oh, you can't yeah. step on yeah, it. Yeah, so actually, I, th I can't remember where it was, which whole town it was, but um, maybe the first time I came to a place like this, I actually stood, stood on this and then walked in and they said, oh no, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, Why? So. Just, just courtesy. Maybe it's that, or no, maybe it brings back luck or something. But anyway, oh. when you enter these places, you're meant to step over. Step over. I yeah. never knew that. So I don't know if you guys yeah. knew that, but I didn't. So now, thank you. Yeah, I've so got an etiquette, <laughs> an etiquette lesson. <laughs> All right, where to next? Now, it has started raining a little bit which isn't unusual for Chongqing at all. I mean, it's especially at this time of year, very cloudy, very rainy, very humid as well. Mm. But uh, I think now we're going to go and see something pretty incredible, right? OK, so because we've got a percussion band over here. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the famous uh, Jielong, Jielong Chui Da. Hi. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Yeah, so uh, Jielong Trida. So Jielong is actually another town in Banan district where this originally came from. Right. And, and uh, Trida, just basically just means kind of uh, blowing and hitting at okay. the drums and, so the, uh, and the horns. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, shall we have a try? Shall we have a try? Or are they going to perform for us first? I think we're going to have a have a little go. Okay, uh, okay. Right. Okay, we're going to try first. As we go with some of these symbols. Okay. Okay. You're just going to go with the cymbals, or are you going to yeah. go on the drums? Oh, maybe I'll do the drums. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Okay. Are you ready? Can you, can you tell us? Yeah. And I give you a little bit of a little bit of a So we're going to try a very simple one, a very simple one. Okay. Because it's tough. Okay, uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> okay. All right, let's try. Okay, one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> leave it to the experts yeah. so we're going to leave you here with a performance today thank you so much for joining us i'm morag with cgtn and thank you james so much yeah. for giving me a tour of Fengsheng. i well, know it's been a pleasure and it feels like we're finishing so early as well I know. You know, it feels like we've just started i know but do come and see Fengsheng if you're ever in chongqing it's a must see and everyone here is so welcoming and lovely i'm going to pass my instruments back over and uh yes enjoy the show thank you, hey, thank you. No, okay Thank <laughs> you.